Good afternoon and early evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of NPU Weekly, the weekly webcast show that, hi, that brings you up to date with all the latest news in the world of North Park Athletics. I'm your host, Kevin Shepke, and for this next half hour to 45 minutes, we'll be bringing you a very extended uh, edition of MPU Weekly as we had a uh, unbelievably just a slew of events going on this past week for homecoming and the athletic department, including a uh, very exciting 26-7 uh, vic- uh, North Park victory for f- uh, over the Millican Big Blue for the North Park football team. I'll be talking with head coach uh, Mike Conway uh, as well as showing you some highlights from that game uh, and then uh, as well but going over uh, some of the other highlights that were going on uh, as well along not only with homecoming, but uh, also with uh, some of the uh, other athletics as well as the um, Hall of Fame induction ceremony. But before we get into anything, let me, let's go ahead and show you that interview that Coach Conway and I had earlier today regarding the 26-7 victory that the Vikings had over Milliken. Joined by head football coach Mike Conway of the North Park Vikings. North Park coming off a 26-7 victory over Milliken, their first victory of the season, and uh, it's a second straight homecoming victory for Coach Conway. Coach, just looking at some of the numbers and uh, looking at uh, the fact that you had a day now to look at the film, what, what are your thoughts now on this being the first victory for you guys this year? <laughs> My thoughts are I'm pretty happy about yeah. it, that's for sure. <laughs> we, we sure needed a win, and, uh, you know, the guys, uh, guys have just been so... Uh, Perseverant through the whole thing, they've, they've worked so hard and uh, without little to show for it. And uh, we've had a really tough stretch. I mean, as we played some great teams, and I would put Elmhurst in there as a great team too. They played really well. They're four zero in a conference too. So we've had some, we've had a tough run, you know, and with uh, Wheaton and North Central and, and Elmhurst, and we've gotten through it. And uh, <laughs> and uh, we we played great Saturday in a lot of different phases of the game and I was really proud of our kids. We played with some emotion. Mm-hmm. You know, I challenged the kids to play, uh, um, to have fun and to play with joy out there and allow the game to be what it is. It's a game, but allow it to be fun for them. And yeah. They had a lot of fun Saturday and I think not only did they have a lot of fun, I think a lot of people that watched the game uh, that were there in attendance, a lot of alumni enjoyed it. I know I talked to a lot of them. And um, it was a really a good day. We had a good day, and Lord knows we needed one. So. <laughs> yeah. Tell us a little bit more on that, um, this being the homecoming game uh, and all the alumni that was in attendance. Talk about just what it meant for them and how, how, how many of them you were able to meet after the game and talk to. Well, I mean, uh, you know, we, we inducted Bill Anderson, uh, one of the great coaches in the, in the history here, uh, mm-hmm. football coaches yeah. uh, into the Hall of Fame. And he's just a great man. I got a chance to meet with him. and. Mm-hmm get to know him a little bit and that was a that was a really nice deal and uh, they had a they had a get together for him afterwards and I went to it and there were probably 40 to 45 uh, football alums from 79 to 85 or 86 that knew Bill at least and they got to see the game and they got to see Viking football and uh, uh, they, they they were pretty happy and they seemed to be pretty proud of uh, what we're trying to do and understand that it's a process and we're we're trying to build on the foundation, and sometimes you don't always uh, get the results you want initially. But we're we're in the process, and I'm just so proud and happy for our kids that they got a chance to play and have fun and, and get rewarded for all their hard work mm-hmm. uh, that they put in. And we'd have we've had a tough road. I mean, we've had a tough stretch, mm-hmm. and um, you know, for our guys to to come up big like that was great. But all the guys, you know, Brian McCaskey was there, and uh, uh, there was a lot of really good guys uh, that I got to meet personally. I met every guy in person, so it was okay. really great for me to have a chance to kind of interact with uh, with all the alumni, great guys, and uh, you know, they, there's a there's a really good group of people that uh, I, I don't think I've run into somebody that's had any sour sourness football alumni. You know, mm-hmm. as tough as things have been over the years. Yeah. Every football alumni I've met have had talked about how wonderful this school is and how great of experience they had, mm-hmm. and uh, which tells me that it's more than just wins and losses here, yeah. and that fits into what I believe in too. It's more than just wins and losses, and uh, if you base your life on wins and losses, then uh, you're going to be up and down. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you base your, your your life on a firm foundation and being being the right kind of man. Um, then that, that should be what we're focusing on, and that's what we are. And that's what the men in the past here, under Coach Patel and Coach Anderson and everybody, they focused on the things that are important, development of young men. And I guess that's probably the thing that 
that's impressed me the most about the people that I've run into here, the alumni that I've run into and that I've met. You know, it's not about that. It's about about their lives and their experience that they've had, and it means a lot. You know, and it's uh, it was pretty it's pretty fun to to kind of experience some more of that interaction with the with the alumni. Awesome. Weekend. Awesome. Looking at some of the individual stats, um, you guys had 529 yards of total offense. TD Conway, 29-53. One, only one interception, 54% completion rating, four touchdowns. Devin Childress, eight catches, 114 yards, two touchdowns. TD Conway, a touchdown. Anthony Burton, a touchdown. Just talk about just what, how much the offense, which is a huge spark plug. Well, <laughs> you know, anytime you get that many yards, it's, uh, it's a pretty good day for you. Um, I know there's some things that I know us as coaches we uh, we were a little concerned about that we've got to you know that we still got to work on. You know, we we moved the field and moved the ball and controlled the football and I think we ran 96 plays okay. um, to their 84. Mm -hmm. That means that we ran 20 more plays. That means we had I think we had 31 first downs. We had okay. uh, uh, we just had a lot of yardage. Uh, I think the biggest thing though that we were we were most excited about was the fact that we ran for 200 yards, and uh, we haven't done that. When you're running the football, when you're getting yardage, you're controlling the clock, when you're doing some things, even with this offense, as fast as we move, um, it's something that we uh, that we needed <laughs> and that we had. So we got a couple guys back. You know, Dakota's been out for the last four weeks, yeah. and you know, he's one player, but he is an emotional leader on our team. And he came back. He had surgery on his hand, and this was his first game back. And Caught eight footballs for us and really gave us uh, an extra weapon out there. You know, with uh, with Anthony Burton now has become a great weapon for us and a great leader and making some big catches. And and uh, Dan Anderson has been a daggone workhorse all year long. He's been there every week and caught passes and just been amazing for us. And uh, and then Devin Childress is the phenom. I mean, he's <laughs> he's an 18 year old phenom. He's everything we would hope he would be. And, not perfect by any means, but he's, he's a special young man. And, uh, not only has he done well on the field, but he's, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a quality young man too. It's everybody on campus, uh, his professors love him. I mean, he's just a good kid. I mean, he's just an amazing young man. I'm really proud that he's with us. And he's going to catch a lot of ball over the next four years. So we're pretty excited about those guys. And the guy that the guy that we did uh, that we did also get back offensively was Philo Lankildi, right. okay. uh, who's yeah. a friend, who's a sophomore that uh, came in this year. And he gave us some uh, he gave us some good downhill running. A bigger kid, 230 pound kid, and mm -hmm. gave us some downhill stuff that we hadn't had for the last three weeks. So, kind of good compliment to Drew and to DJ and those guys. It's kind of now we got a we got a full you know we got a full group of guys offensively, and that makes a big difference. Yeah. And uh, we weren't great by any means in some aspects of it. You know, we we didn't uh, uh, we didn't score some points we needed down there. You know, we could have done some things. We could have put some. Put uh, put them away. Hopefully, a little bit earlier, but we just couldn't convert down there in the red zone. We didn't. We weren't real good down there. We just didn't. Uh, uh, we didn't do some things that we know we're trying to get done, and uh, we need to put points on the board down there. Um, you know, our special teams, uh, as uh, uh, as a whole, has been good. Um, our our PAT and field goal team has not been good. I mean, we have not kicked the ball very well at all this entire year, and. We're going to do everything we can to make steps to make that a <laughs> to like we can get points down there, you know, so we can kick a field goal and take points away from a great, you know, we we had a 73 yard drive and we came away right with nothing, yeah, and uh, that, that's frustrating, you know, and I'm having to go for more fourth downs down there, and and uh, you know, I, we we got to get our kicking game back, and we're going to do everything we can to do that for the stretch here because we're going to need we're going to need Noah, and we're going to need our team. It's not just the kicker either. It's uh, it's operation time, it's protection, it's all those things, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, so that's something we got to work on, you know. But I think the other thing on special teams that we were really impressed with that I was that I just was so happy about was John Geese King, yeah. and uh, he was a big. He was one of my unsung. We have an unsung heroes thing. I don't talk about the heroes; they get enough accolades. Uh -huh. But there are unsung guys that uh, uh, that that we recognize as a def as a team and as a defense and as an offense. And, and uh, John was one of them. I think he had two inside the 20. Oh, okay. I mean, he had two 57-yard kicks that got us out of trouble and flipped the field. And you can't say enough about that. I mean, not just him, but the protection that Palmer snapping. And, and uh, I was really happy about that. And that really gave us some, 
uh, them some longer fields. Yeah. And uh, you know that allow our defense to be uh, allow our defense to play well for four quarters, which was good to see too. You just mentioned the defense too. I know Philip Henderson was a game time decision, but he comes out, gets three solo tackles, gets an interception for you guys, and Dylan Woods also has a nice game for you too. Five solo tackles, kind of the highlight for the defense. Talk about what they were able to do and just as the defense as a whole. Yeah, and Phil was like we have an unsung hero of the week, and Phil was a miracle of the week. Because <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. He, I, we didn't expect him to play at all, and he didn't expect to play. But uh, he started feeling better Thursday, Friday, and and uh, you know didn't practice all week, and he had his best uh, he had his best game since he's been here, I think, uh, okay. overall, and had a big interception for us. And uh, Dylan Woods, now he's he's been. Uh, He's been a really great young player for us. Versatile guy, does a lot for us. Football player, young guy, freshman that uh, has been terrific for us. So, not just them though. I mean, it was really a neat thing because it was a team thing. Right. You know, I think our corners overall played great. We didn't let anybody get by us deep. We played, took some chances and played some man coverage at times too. And um, you know, our linebackers as a core played pretty doggone well again for the yeah. second week in a row. But those guys up front, those four guys up front, uh, uh, are just playing uh, really at a high level right now. So I'm really proud of those guys too. They've been playing well all year long, and you know, with Trevor Forker and Matt Lee fourth, and Hunter Corrigan and Sean Mayava, who's 18. Mm -hmm. uh, he just <laughs> he's only been here two months, and he's been he's been amazing, amazing addition to our team too. But you know, in the safeties, you know, we got those safeties are playing great too. Ryan Boswell's playing. He's playing as well as we've ever hoped him to hope for him to play. Um, a comeback, our comeback player uh, for the last few weeks has been Brian Palmer, who's okay. played both Viking and free safety in Phil's absence and been a great leader for our team. And I'm proud of him. Mm -hmm. He was our comeback player this week. And uh, and then Nick French, you know, is a freshman kid. Uh, boy, he sure don't play like it, don't look like it, don't act like it. He's been he's been an unbelievable kid for us and provided us with some great uh, great minutes out there too. So I don't want I hate to mention all those guys, but <laughs> honestly, really, it was a team thing. You yeah, know, we played. Uh, I think we had 14 three and outs. Um, they were three for 17 on third down, which we hadn't had a game like that for a while, and uh, um, and I think they were 0 for five on fourth down. So. That's, that's a tribute to our team defensively, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I think that's uh, I was really proud of our guys and how well they played as a team. Mm -hmm. Coming up this week, now you guys got Augustana on Saturday out at Rock Island, a team you also beat last year. What uh, what do you think is the game plan now going into this week's game against Augie? <laughs> yeah, you know we're, we're not sneaking up on anybody anymore. We didn't sneak up on Milliken either. Yeah. I mean they they <laughs> knew you know that we beat them last year and they were you know they were ready to play us. And uh, I think our kids are, we're not concerned about other opponents right now. We're concerned about how well we play and we're not backing down from anybody and we're going to play hard. And, you know, it doesn't bother me that they're up for our game, the people we play against, the people we have beaten in the past, because that means we're, we're developing as a program. People are getting ready to play us. People, we're, we're not, we're not a, uh, uh, we're not a whisper and a joke. We're a, we're a legitimate, legitimate team that people got to get ready for and prepare for. And uh, so, you know, uh, Augie's a great team. They got one of the most dynamic football players in this conference. Yeah. And uh, Sam, the, the, their quarterback, is, uh, he's, he's a special athlete, I mean, in, in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Running the ball, decision making, you know, run the triple option. Um, they, they're, they're really good. They're really good offensively. They have some good players on defense as well, and they're playing well defensively. So I think they've won uh, three games this year so far. So they're, they're playing good. I think they've won two in a row. So, okay. you know, so they're, they're, they're on the right track, and Rob's done a great job with them. And, and uh, we know they're going to be a great opponent. They always are. Mm -hmm. um, but we're out to prove ourselves that, uh, uh, that, we're, for, that we're for real, and we're going to keep playing, and we're going to keep fighting. And, uh, and uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna keep uh, we're gonna keep moving forward in this program and against these teams. And uh, but they're a formidable formidable offensive and defensive football team to play against. There's no doubt this week. Okay. Down there. All right. Well, thanks so much, Mike, for taking the time this week, and wish you guys all the best of luck at Augustine this weekend. Great. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate thanks, it. Mike.
Yeah, I wanted to thank Mike again for uh, joining us this afternoon, this earlier this afternoon. As I said, uh, a huge highlight for the Vikings there, as they will now be returning to action um, this coming uh, uh, Saturday, as they will be going out to Augustana uh, for a 1 p.m. game there. As I said, uh, we also had some highlights from that game uh, with North Park's victory over Milliken. So let's go ahead and show you those highlights as well from that game. As you see the Haka. D.D. Conway back to throw. He's got Childers. Man to man again. Touchdown, Vikings! The Vikings wide receivers have been having a tough go of it in terms of hanging onto the ball, but that one actually a ball that had a higher degree of difficulty. This is a quick throw on a fade pattern. Touchdown, Vikings! Eight pass is caught by number 81, Again, Devin This will Childress. be a jet sweep to Dakota Conway. Dakota Conway flipped end over end. Touchdown! Dakota Conway was flipped at the one-yard line, but he managed to get the ball over the plane to the goal line. So Dakota Conway with his seventh catch of the day. This one a touchdown catch. Seven yards, Conway to Conway, and the Vikings have extended their back. lead. Throw is complete to Burton. Burton is bursting through the line, east of the 20, east of the 10. Touchdown, North Park. Just a basic slant pattern to Burton, but he read the seam perfectly. T.D. Conway put the throw right on the button. And the Vikings have reestablished a three-touchdown lead here. Yeah, just an unbelievable uh, uh, performance there by Coach Conway and his troops. And uh, just an unbelievable play. Just offensively and defensively, the Vikings had just an incredible day. Um, for not only the homecoming crowd, but the alumni, just everybody. It was just an unbelievable, exciting day for uh, everybody involved. Um, looking at some of the other things that had gone on campus, uh, the night before that we had a, a Hall of Fame induction ceremony, uh, six new members were inducted to the Hall of Fame. Uh, for the class of 2014, and we have a um, a, a highlight from that uh, that evening uh, from the induction ceremony. So let's go ahead and uh, show you that uh, right now from the, this this past uh, Friday's Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Called me, yeah, I was driving down the road, and he said uh, you got elected to the Hall of Fame here in North Park. And I go, Oh my goodness, let me pull over. <laughs> yeah, I, got, I got a guy through my head that I was going into the Hall of Fame and I said, Jack, what for? He said, for the whole body of work. And I said, where did she? I look at the Anderson over here and I said, I don't think he's counting on those panty rates that I was on in, in my freshman year. <laughs> so, of the body of work, I would even cut some of that back. <laughs> All I'm going to say is there's no way I can thank everybody, but the one person I have to, don't have to, that I'm going to thank is my wife, Jo, and all that she did for me, and all the help that I got, and uh, the notes when I came home after losing Diane and Augie, or, uh, just some of the times we just couldn't get it done, but 
she was always by my side. She was always helping me. And uh, my children who have supported me all of my life. I'd like to first give honor to God. That's what we do. <laughs> my dad said to be like, God is good. What'd you say, Dad? Something similar to that. I can't, I don't have a great memory. It's really just a paragraph on here, but I brought it up anyway. So I'm going to read it. I'm short. Okay. Um, I would first like to thank. Just kidding. I gotta do some push ups or something. Run a few laps. I got this. All right. Oh, bum. All right. I would first like to thank the man who got me here. I swear this is going on. Am I crazy? All right. I'm just going to talk real loud. Can you hear me? All right. All right. I first like to thank the man who got me here, Coach Tyreen. Please give him a hand. He's a. I've learned so much from you, um, not only about hurling, but also about life. Um, you made me laugh. I don't think it's all. <laughs> we got this. Uh, it's not even sad. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Somebody read this for me. All right. You made me laugh. You made fun of me. Uh, you taught me how to be a better person. Thank you for that. Uh, the next person I'd like to thank is the one that's been there uh, since day one, uh, my number one, <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> Stuff like that. Um, anyway, <laughs> I like to thank a lot of people. Uh, Jill and my dad. Thank you. Because I know I'm going to. <laughs> In fact, I'm already there. Thanks, Tim. Um, I have to add a little bit to that story. Um, that was early in the season, and I really did throw them out. And it was very interesting, because it really didn't end right there, as I remember it. We walked out of the pool, which is now the men's varsity locker room there, and a few steps up, and we started yelling at each other. And Coach Dan McCarroll, athletic director, walked by in the middle of our yelling, and he had no clue what was going on uh, with all that. But not only did we survive that day, one of my coaching highlights, I never get through this, was at the end of that year. And uh, we were down at, uh, I think it was Millican, I wouldn't swear to that. Tim had an unbelievable conference swim that year. And he came into my motel room that night and he said, what do I do now? I've swum the times I dream of. And I will never forget that night with him. Okay, Whew. we'll see if that's enough to come in. I printed this out really big in hopes I wouldn't have to put my glasses on. And I didn't know how bright it was going to be in here, so we'll see. Um, and by the way, look over here, I see Cheryl, who played volleyball for me as well. I want to thrill to have her here uh, tonight, too. Thanks. I know you're not here for me, but thanks. <laughs> My speech starts, it's hard to know where to start, but I've already done it. But I do want to say a few thank yous uh, to get started. First of all, thank you to my family back here, to my good friends who came in just to be with me tonight, and it means a lot to share this night with you. Second, I never in my wildest dreams considered the possibility that I would be in the Viking Hall of Fame. So I owe a thank you to Jack and to John Bourne for nominating for me for this. It's a great honor that I certainly never expected. And if I had been driving when they called me, Bill, I had a weak journey. And uh, we're getting younger, but we might be getting weaker. I don't know. <clears throat> so I'll do my best. I had something planned. Uh, it's useless. We'll go with something else. And uh, <clears throat> I'll do my best to compose myself. Um, I want to talk about culture. And what Luke was talking about, and what I think this university is about, is about culture. And as I've gotten into my professional career and working in startups and doing some consulting, uh, it's the single most important thing for organizations is to, develop, is to develop a culture. Whether it's a winning culture or a culture of personal development or a, a culture of, of whatever it is that you want to be, it starts with a culture. And we did not have that when I came here my first year at North Park. We also lost 39 out of 40 games, uh, which is mind-blowing. <coughs> You have to do a lot of things poorly to lose that many people. <laughs> Join the club, Andre. 
I'll be very brief. <laughs> um, first of all, I just want to thank the athletic department for um, Um, just for conveniently making this a varsity sport just in time for my freshman year of college. <laughs> um, that was kind of uh, something that I really couldn't ignore as being ironic and perfect and um, just very special. Um, I think Coach Tim for all of the time that he put um, into our team and with kids at home and another job and just believing in us that we could even be successful in, in Philadelphia and um, doing everything that we had to do to get us there. Um, and I also think it's very important to mention the other girls in the boat who also worked very hard and who wasn't for all four of us. Um, we wouldn't have been successful. All right. <laughs> really uh, just got an alert, the Royals are up one nothing. <clears throat> <laughs> That really is a big deal. Um, uh, I've got I've got notes, but just like everything else that uh, that I do, it's going to come straight from the heart. I want to start by thanking the committee for the consideration. I, just like everybody else on this uh, in this in this Hall of Fame class, I poured my blood, sweat, and tears for four. For four, four straight years into this, and Jv was right. Oh. Every time we set field, every time we set foot on the field, that is all that mattered. Whether it was practice, whether it was the games, whether it was a team meeting, anything, that's all that mattered. Best four years of my life. Coming out of high school, I wasn't the guy who had a mailbox stuff, stuff full of letters. You know, I wasn't my brother, I wasn't my sister. My sister was a brilliant student. My brother is a fantastic athlete. They got all the athletes in the world. That wasn't me. Uh, uh, in fact, Coach Bourne didn't even recruit me. <laughs> Yeah, just uh, unbelievable. Yeah, absolutely. Just a, a exceptional, fun, exciting night for those six inductees. Very humble as they were to be inducted as the newest class of the North Park Hall of Fame. Um, looking at some of the other sports on campus, uh, the men's soccer team, um, they... Uh, improved their record to, to a 4-0 in the conference on Wednesday, last Wednesday, October 22nd, when they earned a 1-0 victory over Carthage, October 22nd. Uh, Kevin Sanyang scored for the Vikings in the 14th minute unassisted, and at halftime, Coach John Bourne was uh, recognized for his 200th victory um, and his 20 years co uh, coaching, 16 with North Park. And we also have a highlight from that victory uh, for the Vikings over Carthage College. So let's go ahead and show that to you right now. Kevin Singing now breaks away for the Turks. He's gonna put it in! He puts it in! Go so go so go so! Go for North Park! On the goal! Kevin Singing puts it in for the, for the Vikings! Unassisted! With 30-58 remaining here in the first half, the Vikings take a 1 0 lead on a goal by Kevin Singing! Milestone victory, NPU Athletic Director Jack Surridge will be making a presentation. Fans, let's hear it for our North Park University head men's soccer coach, Sean Bourne, for his 200th victory. Uh, 
Sub coach John Bourne celebrating his 200th victory in his 20-year career coaching both between the Milwaukee School of Engineering and the North Park Vikings. Coach Bourne earned his 200th victory last week. This past uh, week ago, actually, today, uh, against uh, Illinois Wesleyan. Yeah, just some, just a really great uh, performance there by both Kevin Singh and the Vikings. Just, just all around uh, strong performance for the Vikings in that game. Um, unfortunately, though, they went out to Augustana College on Saturday uh, afternoon and ended up losing a 3-2 decision to the Vikings of Augustana College. Um, the game-winning goal was scored in the 68th minute for Augustana, but both uh, Diego Lashley and Pedro Tommy Mosley uh, scored for the Vikings in that matchup. For Tommy Mosley, it was his 13th, team-leading 13th goal of the season. So um, the Vikings now stand at 12-4 and overall and 4-1 and in the conference, and they will return to action um, this Wednesday night when they host Elmhurst College, October 29th at 7.30 p.m. So we hope that you can join us on the MPU Live channel as we'll be bringing you all the live action, not only with live stats, but live video and audio for that matchup. So we hope that you can join us for that. Um, we ran along to uh, women's soccer. Um, the women's soccer team, unfortunately, went 0-2 last week. They opened the week with a 2-1 loss to Carthage College on October 22nd, the matchup before the men's soccer game that evening. Emma Lundin was the lone goal scorer for the Vikings in that game. Vikings did take a 1-0 lead in the first half when uh, Lundin scored in the 22nd minute off an assist from Elizabeth Heidenstrom. And we have a highlight from that matchup, too. So let's go ahead and show you that uh, in North Park's um, contest at, uh, against uh, Carthage last Wednesday. Job of getting that one. It speeds it up to Emma Dean. Emma Lundin's now got nobody in front of her. All she's got to do is beat the keeper. She's got just a side to and she puts it in! Go, so, go, so, go, so! Go for North Park! Emma Lundin puts it in for the Vikings! With 22-20 remaining here in the first half, the Vikings are taking a 1-0 lead on a goal by Emma Lundin! Go, so go, so go, so go for North Park. Yep, as I said, it was an exciting start for the Vikings, but unfortunately, they um, ended up giving up two goals in the second second half and ended up losing the game uh, two to one. Vikings also went out to um, Augustana on. Uh, on uh, Saturday afternoon and ended up losing that game unfortunately as well by a 4-1 to one score but uh, Emma Lundin ended up scoring her 14th goal of the season which tied the school record for Lundin so now she is um, standing at uh, all-time uh, single season uh, for career goals uh, single season for goals scored in uh, at 14 so her next goal will be the record-breaking uh, single season record for that and the Vikings um, they will be returning to action this Wednesday when they also um, host Elmhurst College at, for a 5 p.m. game. So we hope that you can join us um, on the MP Live channel for all the exciting Vikings women's soccer action. Um, turning to the North Park women's volleyball team, um, the Vikings, um, they unfortunately lost all three matches last week. They um, went 3-0 um, th down to Ed Wheaton October 21st. Then host, boasted, uh, hosted both Augustana College and St. Mary's in um, the first ever try match for the Vikings, as that was their homecoming match. Um, they ended up losing to Augustana uh, by a 3-0 score in the first match, but did actually beat uh, St. Mary's College uh, in the first set of the final match of the night by a 28-26 margin after being down in the match. I believe it was 24-21 that they were down in that set. Um, Melissa Fast Value led the Vikings offensively as she had 14 kills and 12 digs for her 11th double double of the season. Um, and now the Vikings, they um, will be wrapping up this season um, this week when they will be going down to Carthage um, tomorrow night. They'll be going to Kenosha to take on the Lady Reds out there tomorrow night, and then they will be heading to the uh, Barker Classic at Illinois Wesleyan this coming up weekend. So, as I said, yeah, it was just a just an unbelievable, uh, very very busy busy week for um, the Vikings, not only the athletic teams, but just homecoming in general. As we we will show you that Hall of Fame ceremony that we had uh, last week, and. Uh, also, too, not to, not, not to mention, but uh, it's coming up soon as the practices have already begun now for the both North Park men's and women's basketball team. So uh, we'll be bringing you um, some uh, some stop and chats and some conversations with uh, both head coach Amanda Crockett and as well as head coach Tom Slider in the next week 
uh, to bring you um, some uh, news on the upcoming seasons for both the men's and women's basketball teams. And uh, so we hope that you stay tuned to uh, not only our website, but to uh, the MPU Live channels. We'll also be bringing you some that exciting Vikings basketball action uh, coming up in mid-November. So once again, once again, we'd like to thank uh, head coach Mike Conway of the North Park Vikings for joining us today. And uh, we want to thank everybody else for joining, joining us, and we hope you enjoy today's NPU Weekly. I'm your host, Kevin Shepke, and, uh, and as we said, we have uh, a lot of inviting Vikings action coming up this week as we have men's and women's soccer on Wednesday night, and then the big one on Saturday night as they will be hosting Wheaton College as a women's soccer and a men's soccer doubleheader. So we hope that you will join us on the NPU Live channel for both those uh both those evenings, we'll be bringing you all the live, exciting action. So, once again, my name is uh, Kevin Sheppey, I'm your host. Hope you enjoyed this edition of MPU Weekly. And in the meantime, go Vikings!